Um, now, as I understand, it was just over 41 years ago, in November 1968, that Ray Himes presented his concept for Rose Gardens for Tiamudu to the monthly meeting of Tiamudu JCs. Earlier today, we started the celebration of her 40th anniversary um, with an opening at the Tiamudu Museum. A new exhibition, Cowtown to Rose Town, was opened. And I urge everyone to go and have a look, it's a wonderful experience. The exhibition consists of a, a series of historical photographs tracing the garden's development. Now many of these are from the archives of the Tiamudu Courier. And as well, there's a set of new images by uh, nature photographer Phil Brown. And the museum has um, had them all framed and they've got a new initiative. Um, they're having a silent auction, so you can, you can buy them. That exhibition and the auction runs until February next year, February the 9th. I'd like to introduce to you Keith's story. Keith was JC president in 1969 during the Timuru Rose Garden project. Thank you, Dan. In 1968, when it was announced that the World Conve Rose Convention was coming to the Waikato and came to be centred on Hamilton, Ray Holmes presented an inspired vision to JC's and Tiamudu that we create a rose garden that could be part of that convention. And uh, the JCs uh, adopted that very quickly. And uh, the proposal was that we develop a reserve where the rose gardens at present are. There had been many proposals for using that reserve previously, and none of them had come to fruition. So over the Christmas New Year break, we lobbied the borough councillors individually to get their support to allow us to develop that, that site. And the proposal was that we would take over the site, design and uh, develop the Rose Gardens, and hand it back to the council debt free. Fortunately, the borough council accepted that offer, and uh, so then we realised the magnitude of the task that we'd undertaken. Of course, it couldn't be completed without the cooperation of members of the Rose Society. And uh, they uh, were enormous in their contribution. In particular, as has been mentioned, uh, Pat and Patty Stevens. And the tremendous input they had uh, into, in particular, selecting roses that were going to be of a standard that was worthy of a world convention. And then we started cultivating the site and uh, found it was full of twitch. And then began uh, uh, a community involvement in breaking and getting rid of the twitch. And I think that was the essence of the whole project, was the community involvement. People felt they had come and be part of it and transform what was an eyesore of the entrance into town into something that we could be proud of. And so uh, we had all sorts of people uh, there helping, all ages, even down to school children. And so the site itself developed. Pat and Patty Stevens were accumulating uh, uh, the roses that had to be planted. We had to excavate all those beds down to a metre deep and then fill them with compost, which we got from farmers, silage waste, mushroom waste, and so on, and eventually filled the beds up and got them ready for planting. It had to be financed and so uh, uh, the JCs took on a number of projects to do that. Again, uh, many of them the idea of Ray Hines. We had a donkey derby on the race course where we had uh, quite a, a carnival atmosphere and raised quite a bit of money. We also formed an international salt company and uh, uh, got socks from film stars, entertainers all around the world and they converted them into hand puppets and auctioned them at special functions. So there are a number of innovative ideas of raising finance and people uh, fully support them. Individuals could also buy roses to, uh, or pay for the roses to go into their gardens and many people in town did that. And so a lot of people in the community felt that they were involved, they had a part of that garden. 
when the roses were planted, it was a matter of maintaining them while the lawns grew and uh, the, the garden was, the finishing touches done, the wall up and so on. And people adopted beds and maintained them. Schools uh, took over beds and, uh, and the children uh, uh, weeded them and uh, helped the roses to nurture them. And uh, of course individuals uh, did too as well as JCs. And so the whole project came to fruition when the uh, uh, the gardens were open and handed back to the borough council. And following that, there was the, the idea that we promote Tiamu as the rose town of Tiamu. And the committee set up again by JCs, uh, in which Ray Holmes had a considerable input, promoted Tiamu as the rose town uh, and a place worthy of visit to two accompanies. And so buses would call in on the way to Waitoma, call into Tiamu, and uh, people could view the gardens. And again, the community bought into that idea, and many businesses included the name Rosetown in their business name. Of late, that image hasn't been uh, enhanced as really it could, and I think that uh, it's one that we could probably uh, focus a bit more on. Hamilton has changed its image a number of times to try and uh, get an identity, and each time they seem to lose a bit of credibility and uh, lose a lot of image. But you know, it has become known as the Rose Town of New Zealand, and it was largely the community involvement that did achieve that. And so, uh, JC's thanks go to the community for their participation. Thank you. Thanks very much, Keith. I can remember a little bit of the garden going on. My um, dad over there was JC's at the time. And I was only about 10, but I think I helped right once. That was about it. But it was very exciting for the town at the time. Um, I'd now like to ask our Mayor, Alan Livingston, to say a few words. Thank you, Dean, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, festive occasion where we start uh, our Christmas celebration and what better time than the 1st of December and also to celebrate 40 years on from the establishment of the Rose Gardens. Firstly, uh, thank you very much to everyone involved with uh, the Te Ao Mutu, uh, Christmas spirit. You've done a, a great job. The uh, Waipa Christian School, St Pat's School, children involved with the Nativity, the Brass Band and the Choir. Thank you very much indeed for starting the Christmas spirit and uh, uh, that's going to continue for the next 25 days. It's a special occasion of course uh, for, to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Te Amutu Rose Gardens and Keith in his usual expert manner has very well outlined the history of the establishment of the Rose Gardens where it started with a vision by Ray Hines and has become uh, a reality which we can all be very proud of and have been for many years. It was something, as, uh, as Keith outlined, by the people, for the people, and it's something that we've been able to enjoy and identify with throughout this time. But could I just say thank you very much to those that had the initiative, had the vision, and carried out the hard work in making it a reality. Um, it uh, obviously transformed a um, an unattractive piece of land at the entrance into Te Aumutu, into a very special rose garden. And we're so fortunate to have uh, the likes of Pat and Patty Stevens to lead the way. And uh, as Keith mentioned, it coincided with the first Ro uh, World Rose Festival, which was hosted by Te Aumutu and Hamilton, and was a huge success. And from that, it um, has established or provided a real identity for Te Aumutu, as Keith mentioned, with the passage of time, the likes of Hamilton has lost its identity at times, but throughout, Te Aumutu has retained that uh, identity of Rose Town, and it's something we should uh, certainly uh, preserve and cherish, because uh, there's no other thing I'd suggest that we can readily identify with. Um, could I just say, Keith probably glossed over the hard work that went in by a number of people and um, obviously Keith was one of those very much to the fore 
Um, Ray was chairman of, of that committee, but uh, Keith in his capacity of president of JCs at the time, I know for one, put in a huge amount of time. And he epitomised a number of people who, in effect, were carrying out two jobs at the time. They did their own work during uh, normal work hours, and after that, they'd either come down themselves or with their own machinery and carry on and do that work. And uh, to all of those folk, thank you very much indeed for the, uh, the, the hard work that you, you did. And quite clearly, uh, as Keith mentioned, it created a, a real community spirit and brought the town together in uh, whatever way it could. And as I understand it, Keith mentioned about the, the compost that was there. Well, uh, I understand that everyone in, the, in Te Aumutu contributed to that because the, they used the compost from the sewage plant to go towards it as well. So everyone can take some ownership of it. But look, it's, um, it's a very special occasion. Uh, it's great that we've got uh, some of those that were involved 40 years ago. And we're sorry that the likes of um, Patty Stevens can't be here this evening, although she was there at the um, uh, museum exhibition. And as Dean mentioned, it's on until the beginning of February. On, and I'd urge everyone to, to go and attend. But uh, let's celebrate the occasion. It is Christmas. But uh, this particular year, it's a very special one with the 40th anniversary of the opening of the Rose Gardens. And to everyone that's been involved with it, thank you very much indeed. And you can be very proud of the legacy that you've provided to Tiamatu and its residents. Thank you very much. Just momentary, I would like to say that no matter where I go, visiting in New Zealand, you mentioned Te Aramutu, and so many people say, oh yes, it's, that's where that lovely rose garden is. And you feel pr very proud of it. And it's been so worthwhile. As Keith said earlier, we do have a fear that if our own community forget that we have this rose garden, the rose garden's going to die. At the moment, Things are dying a bit. So let's get behind the Rose Garden and make it even more well known amongst ourselves and throughout New Zealand and beyond its shores. I'd like to cut the page. We haven't done this 50 years this Boxing Day. We did the same thing when we got married. 